Hi everybody, my name is Brianna and I'm really excited to walk through assignment one with you. Um, I wrote assignment one this term, so I'm very excited to walk you through uh, the context of the assignment. So this term's assignment is CS Ninja, and it's just going to be a small board turn-based game, uh, which is very heavily inspired by one of my favourite games from Cool Math Games, Ninja Painter. Uh, but before we go into the actual assignment, let's go through a couple admin things. So right now I'm on the assignment homepage. Um, and on the right there is a nav bar here, so if you press CS Ninja you'll get all the intro information and the subheadings will appear. So there's an overview and getting started, the program structure, a reference mutation, some starter code, um, frequently asked questions, and the stages. So there's a bit of a, a summary on every single stage and all the substages, and of course what we expect you to write up. Um, the, the, this video that I'm building right now is not up here because is it being filmed right now, but this will be replaced with the video. Um, and you can also see down here that every single thing that you need will be down here. So for stage one, if you press this, you can see sub stage 1.1 and all the things that we expect you to do. The assumptions, restrictions and clarifications that we may have, some examples and how to run auto test. Um, and this is kind of like the same across all the stages and the tools and the extension portion. Um, but something that's also really important is, although at the very bottom, is the assessment information. So I'm going to go through that first. So we first see the assignment conditions. So this says that this is an individual assignment, so joint work is not permitted. Um, you're not permitted to use generative AI. You're not allowed to share, publish, or distribute your work, whether that's when you do 1511 or rather whether that's once you finish 1511. Um, all of this is can result in a breach in academic integrity, um, which means you're in breach of the Young Student Code, um, and you can get zero for the assignment, or you can get a uh, zero or a fail for 1511. And of course, down here we have a submission of work to explain how you can submit your assignments. Uh, you've already seen give commands for your labs. Uh, this is a very similar com command, but just for the assignment. And of course, right at the very bottom, we have the assessment scheme. So to summarize, assignment one is worth 20% of your final mark. But the way we mark your assignment is in two, two parts. The first part is performance, and 80% of the marks are assigned to performance. So performance is all marked by auto tests. So every single auto test you pass passes contributes to some marks towards performance. And 20% comes from style. This is all hand marked by your tutors. Um, and there's the style marking rubric here. So make sure you have a good read through of all this. Passing 1501 style should get you a majority of the marks here, but there's some things that it, we can't check with 1501 style, for example, something like vertical white spacing or um, how well you're doing your comments um, and things like, ooh, let's see, like function usage if you have enough appropriate functions um, or code repetition, it's not necessarily something that you can mark through the style checker or constant usage, it's not something we can mark necessarily through the style checker. So th these are key things that we're looking for. And just a reminder, if you use any illegal elements, um, your mark is capped at 16 out of 20, and you can find all the legal elements in the style guide, which is hyperlinked here. Lovely. And the due date, um, very important, is the 14th of July at 5 p.m. So this is a Monday, um, and we're really nice with 1501 in that for every day you submit late, we take off the ceiling. So what that means that if you submit one day late, then the maximum mark you get is 95%. We will never take 5% off of whatever mark you would have gotten. So it's always coming down and down and down, which means that if you know you're not gonna do a certain portion, you can kind of have a bit more leeway to give yourself some breathing time with the assessment. However, we will not take any submissions after five days late, unless you have any special provisions in place, which would usually come through special conditions, or sorry, special considerations, or if you've emailed the course account. And of course, right at the very bottom, we have our change log. So as there are any major changes or if there are any minor changes we'll add things to the change log so make sure you read through the change log especially if you finish something early and now the spec has slightly changed so let's go back up to the top um before i go through getting started and how to do all this work um i just want to elaborate that if you need to get help you can always join help sessions so help sessions are available um all provided through the course and it's a way where you can get one-on-one -on -one help on support with the assignment or any uh, content you need recapped or even your labs. Um, and we'll try to give you as much help as you need. However, 
we will only provide really minimal support for stage four because it's really designed to challenge you and push those students who have a stronger grasp of the concept we're teaching with 511. Um, you can also post on the course forum or you can ask questions in your lab. So if I go here, so this is a course forum. Make sure you're posting underneath the assignment one um, tag or category and you'll be able to ask things here. Just a reminder to not post any code snippets um, publicly. You can always post something privately though. Um, and here's the help session timetable. So we're in week four now. So thank you, Sophia. There's one online Monday or on week four. Um, and there are plenty of other help sessions. So there's some online and some face-to-face -face at K17CC help. And there are plenty of them all the way up until your due date. Lovely. And cool. Um, let's see what else is there to talk about before we get started. Oh, right. Um, with the submission, you can submit as many times, just like in your labs, you can submit as many times as you'd like. Um, we will only take your latest submission, um, but we always recommend that you submit as you go so that you know, as you get closer to the deadline, you know you have something committed. Uh, sorry, something submitted, um, but please submit as many times as you want. We will only always take the last submission. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so now that we're in VLab and I've opened up the terminal, let's make a directory to put all of our assignment code. And let's change into this directory. Um, let's get all the starter code. So I'm going to get that with 1501 fetch activity. Cool, that file has come across correctly. So. Let's compile it as well, just so we can see that everything's fine. Lovely. Um, and I can run all the tests on this right now. I'm obviously not going to pass anything because I'm just passing through the starter code. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show that all the tests will work. Um, oh yeah, not passing anything. So there are a lot of all tests, and please don't be scared by that. Um, I'm going to see if I can just pause that for now. Um, but you probably will not find it very useful to run all the auto tests, um, especially at the very beginning. Like there's no need to run stage one, two, three, and four tests when you're just doing stage 1.1. So we also provide special auto test stage commands. So you write auto tests, 1501 auto tests, hyphen stage, stage so one like this, and this will only run all the auto tests associated, associated with stage one, um, which will kind of look the same when we let this run. Uh, so I'm gonna stop that really quickly. And there's also a way for you to just run all tests just for, for example, stage 1.1. So just by changing the argument, I would run all the tests for stage 1.1. And so there are six tests passing here. But I can also run the tests for just one particular test uh, by doing this. So you can see zero test pass, one test fail. So that was just running the one test. So that's really neat. Cool. And handy. Um, you can always also run 151 style on this, which I hope that the starter code is passing. Um, oh, here we go. I have, I haven't put it in a ZID. Right. Well, this would make more sense if I actually open it up, right? So let's open up our starter code and have a look at it. So in the starter code, there's some blank temporary placeholder text for you to put in your your name, your ZID, the date you write this and the description of your program. There's also some space for you to include your own libraries if you need to, or for you to add your own hashed finds, um, and space for you to add your own enums, and space for you to add your own structs. Um, and there are some provider function prototypes, and then there is also a main function. So let's read top down. So there's an enum entity which holds wall, paint bucket, exit locked, unpainted, unpainted, exit unlocked, ladder, star, and empty. And we have some colors as well, red, yellow, green, blue, purple, or no color. At the moment, a tile is defined either by an entity or a color. So we could have a wall, we could have a paint bucket, um, and assumably any of these things could be colored. So let's have a look at our main function. So in our main at the moment, it will just print our welcome message. It creates a board, which is a 2D array of struct tiles. So that means that every single array element is a struct tile. Um, and then we call this function initialize board. And what this does 
is it just goes through every single index in our 2D array, and sets the entity to be empty, and sets the color to be no color. And then after that's been done, we call print board. So we go down here. And the way this print board function works is that um, it'll print some nice little spacing around and print the title. Um, but it looks like it goes row by row and for every single column, um, it'll look at the tile. And then if we happen to have a player at this tile, then we will print a player. It, but if this tile happens to be an entity, so we at the entity field for this particular index in the 2D array called board, if this happens to be a ladder, then we'll print this. If we get a wall, we'll print this. If we get an exit locked, then we'll print this. And as it unlocked and so on and so forth. But we can see for paint bucket and for painted and unpainted that it's a bit special. We print a char and we call this color to char function. And this color to char function, I can find it. There we go. Will give you a char corresponding to that color. So if we get red, then it will give us back R. Or if we get yellow, then Y, green, then we'll get G, blue is B, and purple is P. Or if there's, it doesn't match to a nice color, it'll give us a space. Um, so our paint buckets have these two slashes, so it kind of looks like a paint bucket. Um, and it's represented by just that particular char, so the uppercase letter. And here we'll also get the uppercase letter for a painted tile. But for unpainted tile, we'll get the lowercase version. And this two lower function is defined in the C type library. And the star will just print an asterisk. And otherwise, if there's nothing there, we'll just print some space. Um, and so that's kind of how a print board works. So this is our starter code. Um, but it might not really help for you when you're doing the assignment and you're reading through the spec. Um, let's say for stage one, um, if you don't know like what's going on and I'm trying to finish stage one or, and it doesn't quite make sense when you're playing around with the examples or reading through the examples what to expect you can always call up the reference solution so let's create a terminal so if I want 1511 CS Ninja this will open up the reference solution so this is the solution that we use to mark to mark with so your, your implementation should follow any behavior as per the reference solution so I can pass through some commands, so adding a wall at position 1, 1, or adding an exit at position 3, 4. I can add an unpainted tile at 5, 6 with the color 0. I can add a, um, a ladder at position 5, 8, and I can stop the setup. Um, I can add 1 star at 3 and 7. I can spawn my ninja at 9-9 nine, nine, and I can have my ninja move around and do interaction with a couple things and we can do slam movements so this will slam the, the ninja all the way to the very right um, and I can pick up a star but I can't walk through a wall unfortunately um, and this is all stuff that you'll be coding up but as you can see I have I have not written any code uh, but I've just put up the reference solution and been able to see and mimic what I would expect um, my implementation to do. And you can always stop by Control C. Lovely. Um, let's see if there's anything else to forget. Ah, yes. Um, so in stage one, uh, you'll be working through the setup phase. So that's adding the features, for example, walls, paint buckets, exit, unpainted tiles, and the ladders. And in stage 1.2, we'll go through adding a long ladder. And in 1.3, you'll be expected to handle errors. And in 1.4, we'll add the stars. And in 1.5, we'll spawn the ninja. And then in stage 2, we'll do the gameplay phase. So that's the ninja turn. So that's being able to move the ninja around the board, printing an inventory, painting some tiles, printing points, and printing the board statistics. And in stage 3, we'll do the, a further gameplay phase. So some more work on the, extra, on the ninja turn by introducing extra mechanics. So being able to win and lose the game, um, slamming, um, having breakable blocks and having trampolines and then in stage 4 we'll do some extra mechanics on top of that which is undoing moves and introducing hard mode and of course there's an extension um, section which is not for marks and that's playing with splash kit which is a library that allows you to share a graphical user interface or sorry create a graphical user interface and you'll be able to share that with the with other students in 1511 um, and the difficulty as you go from stage one to four is obviously going to increase. 
um, and the amount of works, the amount of marks you can get as you go up decreases as well. Um, will be the tutors are more than happy to give you help and hints as you require. But just a reminder that as you get closer towards stage four, we we try to give you less and less help um, and minimal support because it's really designed to challenge you and to really uh, push your understanding or the limits of your understanding. Um, and it wouldn't be quite fair if we gave everybody all the help in the world um, to complete stage four. Um, but yeah, I think that brings us to the end of the assignment video. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you have as much fun with the assignment as I had writing it. I imagine that I am going to feel some nightmares, but I hope you still get through the end with a smile saying that you're really proud of yourself. So yeah, that's it. Bye!